Are you a fan of the Dragon Ball Super card game? If so, check out QueenCityGaming.com for sealed products, singles, and more. Just use promo code MAFUBAJAR-10 to save 10% off your order every time. Welcome back to the MAFUBAJAR, where you've been sent away for another news video on Set 7. Now, since the last time I did a new update, we've gotten quite a few cards announced during that time. Uh, some of the ones are not going to be the newest ones, because of Tuesday's video, I explained to you guys my situation. I wasn't able to cover those in time. But there are cards that we just got announced just the other day. And they're really, really amazing. So, I'm going to start off here going over the blue cards. Because that's one of the ones I missed. And we're going to start off here with the Goku and Vegeta leader. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. Because I did already go over this when some of the individual cards were leaked. So, he's got a permanent here. That if he lasts four or less, he gains 5k power. Pretty interesting. Auto is when you attack, draw a card. Pretty standard. Activate main. If you have four more energy, choose up to one blue Goku and a yellow Vegeta in your hand with energy cards two or less and play them. You can only play Future Trunks and Vegito cards for the duration of the turn, and you can't activate the skill for the duration of the game. So it's a pretty good way to get to spam the field a little bit. Not to mention, you can still play Trunks and Vegito. That, open, that still opens up quite a few plays as well. So, really, really nice there. His Awaken, I'm a little eh on because it's at 4 life, but you only draw one card. So you only even get to draw two or just draw one, untap one. Just draw one card. I don't know why he did it like that, but let's go ahead and see what he's got here on the Awaken side. It's going to be Super Saiyan Blue Vegito, Energy Eruption, and of course he attacks, draw a card, standard stuff. And the other autos, when you come up with one or more battle cards with a combo cost of one in your energy using a skill, which we have a few of those, or at least I do do that. You choose one of those battle cards, and when the battle ends, the chosen card is returned to the owner's hand instead of being placed in its owner's drop area. So that, that's kind of cool. You don't like fully lose that energy. That I mean, you still lose the energy, but you don't lose the card itself because it just goes straight back to your hand. So it's not bad. I could definitely see some interesting combos going on with this, especially with its unawakened side. All right, now the next blue leader. Oh, <laughs> I've been waiting for this for so long. A Goku Black and Zamasu leader. So yes, this leader counts as both Zamasu and Goku Black on the Unawakened side, which that's that's really awesome because that, in a sense, not that I'm saying it's the most competitively wise idea, but you could put technically put cards that both are restricted to Goku Black and restricted to Zamasu in the same deck. Again, not the most competitive. Most likely, not the most competitive option, but it is an option. So I really like that right there. And his auto is pretty cool too. When he attacks, you look at your top five from the top of your deck. Choose up to one blue or yellow Goku Black or Zamasu among them and add to your hand. Then shuffle your deck. So yes, we are getting both blue and yellow Goku Black Zamasu cards. So that's going to be really, really awesome. And it, the Awakening here is very interesting too. So what the Awakening is, when your opponent has three or more energy, you draw a card and choose up to one of your energy, switch it to active mode, and flip it over. So this has nothing to do with life whatsoever. It's just your opponent's energy. And we go up here to the Awakened side, Supreme Strike Fusamasu, which I did go over a little bit as well. The auto is the ex his first auto is the exact same as the auto on the back on the front side. The other auto is that when his card attacks a leader card, it gains minus five power for the duration of the turn. And it's got two activate means here. The first one being the most important one. If your opponent has eight or more energy, you choose up to four cards from your opponent's life and place them at the bottom of their deck in any order. In many cases, that's game right there. Because of how quickly most decks want to awaken to fully get out their strategy. So, and we do have a lot of ways to boost our opponent's energy, which to me is still an iffy thing, but we'll go over those in a little bit. And the other activate main is... For one energy, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards and return to the owner's hand. So, a nice little way to get rid of cards on the field. And only one energy, that's not the worst. So, that does it for that leader. And let's get to some of the battle cards here. We have Super Saiyan Blue Goku the Sweeper. This this will be like the two-drop Goku that they would give you to use with the leader effect. And the others, when you play this card, you may choose one card in your life, add it to your hand. If you do choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of 4 or less and return to the owner's hand. So, nice little way of energy removal while self awaken at the same time. So, pretty cool. We have Saiyan Bloodline Goku here next. 
When you play this card, you look at the top three cards from the top of your deck, choose up to one blue or yellow sand among them, add it to your hand, and then place the remaining cards in the bottom. So it's a really good way to search sand cards, because the only other generic search we had was the green one drop trunks, which it wasn't bad, but you looked at the top two, you picked a sand, and you had to pitch the other one. So if you activated the trunks and you looked at the top two and neither one of them were sands, you had to pitch them both. So that could have hurt a little bit here, but this is a bit more of a safer way to search. It's color restricted, yes, but blue and yellow, that covers like over half the sands we have in the game. So very powerful search card. And next up here we have one of my favorite design cards in the set so far, just because it's future Gohan. Undying Spirit Gohan, he is a counterplay. It's a play him, and his permanent is of a multi-color card in your energy. You reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one. So he essentially becomes a two-drop counterplay. And his auto is when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of four or less, return it to its owner's hand. Then if it's your opponent's turn, choose up to one of your blue energy and switch it to active mode. So not a not a bad um counter there for blue. Plus it's a battle card too that you play on top of it, so pretty, pretty interesting. Now, what's really cool is that this is not affected by Deflect, because it, the whole auto here is not part of Counterplay, the auto is separate. So, definitely another thing to think about too, with this card here. Again, I definitely love the artwork on it. Like, this set would have been 100% perfect if we not... Nah, it's still really perfect for me, but I really do want a future Gohan leader down the line, because like, he was the best Gohan out there. But that's just my opinion. Alright, so one of our blue super rares that we have here is SS2 Trunks Memories of the Past. It's a 6 drop, double strike, and you can only have one of these cards out in the, in the battle area at a time. And he's got two autos. The first one is when you come up with this card skill from an energy area using me Meteorotic Energy Super Saiyan Blue Vegito skill, which we'll go over that card, play this card at the end of the battle. So it can essentially get itself out for just one energy instead of paying the 6. So, really, really cool. And the auto is when you play this card, draw one card and choose up to one card in your hand and add it to your energy. So, you're, you're even essentially replacing the energy you just spent while also boosting yourself energy as well. So, this is a really useful card. It's just the first auto has to be with that Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta specifically. So, it's not the most splashable thing in the world. But, still very neat. And we have Trunks fighting the darkness here next. Another artwork I absolutely love. So one drop in the auto is when you play this card, you choose one card in your hand, place it in your drop area. If you do, choose up to one yellow Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta with an energy cost of two and up to one Super Saiyan Blue Goku to sweep it from your deck and add them to your hand. So it essentially gives you the two drop, the two drops of Goku and Vegeta that you would play with that unawakened Goku and Vegeta leader. So it's a nice way to search that, if that's the route you want to go. Plus, more Trunks cards are always awesome. And we have Trunks the Sweeper here next. And his auto is that when you play this card, choose up to win your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of 2 or less, ignoring barrier and return to the owner's hand. This is a nice card for Blue as well, because we need, like, Blue really does need, like, those kind of cards, because Green has it for Krillin, it destroys it. Yeah, I would rather it be destroyed than add to your hand, but it's still removing it from the field at the time, so... Definitely a good card for blue. Alright, next page here. Next one here's gonna be Bulma saying farewell. The auto is when you come up with this card during your turn, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards when energy costs three or less, and return to your own hand. Not a bad energy, not a bad way of battle card removal either. You do have to pay one energy for it, and it's only a 5,000k in boost. But it's really just for the auto, so it passes. It's not bad. And we have my filled with energy. This is going to be the blue super combo for this set. And it's a life or less draw card. Which, I'm going to say it's not that bad. Not... Mm, is there really a better blue? Actually, now that I think about it, I don't really think there's like too much variety for blue at the moment for super combos. Like, we definitely... Yeah, I'm positive. We definitely don't have a Paragus for blue, so... I guess it almost doesn't matter which one you play. Alright. Whis the Regulator. That's another artwork I absolutely love. So one drop is activate main as you choose one card in your hand, place it in a drop area, and draw one card. So it's another one of those that you just pitch one and draw every single turn. 
but the fact that he's a blue god actually is a little bit more relevant. Like, just, just slightly. Especially for the whole beer strategy, so... Not a bad card. And next up here we have Gowasu Zamasu's Master. The auto is when you combo with this card and your leader is blue, choose one card from your hand, place it in your drop area if you do choose one. Choose up to three battle cards when energy costs three or more and 35k power or less from your drop area, return to the bottom of your deck. Or you can choose one card in your opponent's drop area, return to your opponent's deck, and then they have to shovel their deck. So it's essentially one of those cards that fights off Janimba Mill a little bit. Every color I notice is getting this, so definitely awesome to see that. Not to mention he's a god, so he's he is a little bit searchable too, so definitely am more of a thumbs up with that. Almighty Duo over Zeno. I am very conflicting with this card here. Let me just read it to you first, then I'll explain. So he's a 5 drop with Deflect, so that's pretty nice. His auto is when you play his card, you choose all battle cards, return them to their owner's decks, then all players who return cards to their decks shuffle their decks. I'm a little conflicted with this one. To me, the only reason why they would even try to sell something like this is because they either next list or eventually they are going to be trying to hit uh, the plan god Zeno. Because the only thing this has over the other Zeno is the fact that it has Deflect. That's it. That's the only plus it has. Other than that, it's a much worse of it's a much worse version of the set 2 Zeno. Not to mention his power is 19 instead of 15, so you can't chain tech trunks to go straight into the Zeno. So I'm really just scratching my head here. Like I said, the fact that they might hit Zeno on the next list is the only reason I could see them trying to shove out this card here. But if they don't, then this card practically has no use in my opinion. But, that's just me. And just like the other Zeno, he has a zero combo power, so combo with him is basically useless. No, not basically, it is useless. So, just a weird card though. So, we're also going to be getting a Vados card here, which is a 3 drop, 30k power. Not bad for vanilla beatdown, gives you another option. So, nothing more to say on that. And now we're getting to the other Universe 6 stuff. Kale, Sister of Annihilation. It's a 4 drop, but it's an EX Evolve of 1 blue on top of a blue Kale with an energy cost of 1, so relatively easy to bring out. And her auto is when a card evolves into this card, you may choose all of your opponent's battle cards other than this card. And all, all, all of your battle cards other than this card, place them in your owner's drop area. If you do, choose all of your opponent's battle cards when the energy cost of 4 or less and return them to their owner's hands. For something that only is all... One drop Kale, so it's such a, something that's only two energy in total. That's not too bad. No, <clears throat> sorry about that. It's really not too bad. I don't know how I feel about destroying all your other cards. And the way it's worded, like you can't like have cards out to protect and you still get to bounce your opponent's stuff. No, you have to get rid of some of your own stuff. But again, for only two energy in total, one energy for the one drop Kale and one energy to EX into this, that's not really too bad. And next up here we have the next super rare. Yes, this is the next super rare. Kale the Awakened Sister. She's got critical, so always good. And two autos. First one is during your turn at the end of the battle, you combo with this card. Choose up to one blue Kale in your battle area and play this card on top of it. So you don't... Four energy is not the worst, especially for blue. But the fact that you have you could pay even less energy is all the better. And the auto is when you play this card, choose up to when your opponent's battle cards in rest mode, negate that card's skills for the duration of the turn, and, re and return it to the owner's hand. I mean, I like that, but to me it's a bit of a jumbled up way of saying, just return something to the opponent's hand. Then again, though, actually no, I take that back, because say you've got a monster with indestructible on the field, but it doesn't have barrier. You can go ahead and negate the indestructible, and then bounce it back. So, okay. Okay, yeah, this does have a... There, it's not as jumbled up as I thought. There is a bit of logic behind that. So, not bad. And this is the one drop KO that they were talking about. The Timid Sister. Permanent is this card can't be KO'd by your opponent's skills. Not bad. The yeah, when you play this card, choose up to one blue or yellow universe six card in your drop area. And with an energy cost of three or less... Three or more, I'm sorry, and add to your hand. 
So it's the one drop that you use for all your blue KO combos here. Not to mention it helps recycle some universe six stuff. So not bad. All right, now we're getting into some of the good stuff here. Goku Black the Replicator. It's a four drop with a very long auto. And when you play this card, if your leader is a Goku Black or is a Masu card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, place it in your opponent's energy in rest mode, then play one shadow token. Then if you then if your opponent has three or less energy, reveal the top card of your opponent's deck. If that card is a battle card, place it in your opponent's energy in rest mode. Otherwise, draw one card and then your opponent shuffles their deck. So all the energy that you're giving to your opponent, they get it in rest mode. So they can't use it for like counters or anything immediately. But to me, it's still dangerous overall just giving your opponent tons of energy. But there's a few more effects with that. So I'm not going to be fully discrediting it. Alright, next page here. This is another card that we already went over. So I'm just going to do a quick little refresher of it. It's got Barrier. To the auto is when we play this card, Goku Black is a monster is your leader. Add a top card of your deck to your energy. So it's basically a Whis for Goku Black and Zamasu. So that's definitely cool. And the other auto is when you play this card, at the end of your opponent's next turn, reveal a top card of your opponent's deck. If it's a battle card, place it in your energy. Otherwise, you draw a card. So, Barrier gets to add both an energy to you and your opponent. So, this one's not bad. I'd say this is the better energy ramp up to play for your opponent, but obviously you can be playing as much as you can, especially with that leader condition. All right. Goku Black, Evil's Accomplice. Now, I love the artwork on this one. Like, when I saw this artwork, I was just like, oh, so beautiful. It's got the fluck, first of all, so that's always good. So that's the main is once per turn, choose one card in your hand, place it in your drop area. Choose up to one mass replication from your deck, activate it, then shuffle your deck. So yes, Goku Black and Zamasu are getting a field card, and I love it so much. I can't wait to tell you guys about it. All right, Betrayal of the Master. Love. See, all the Goku Black and Masu stuff artwork-wise is amazing in this set. The activate man is choose one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost greater than or equal to your opponent's energy and return it to its owner's hand. So, essentially, it's a blue version of Father Son Kamehameha, which is not a bad card. I mean, we kind of had something like this in Father Son Gallic Gun from set two. But that was a two drop. This one's a one drop. So for certain blue decks, I can actually see this being in a side decks competitively, not just Goku Black Zamasu specifically, but like anything that runs blue, I could kind of see this in some side decks here and there. So it's really not a bad card. All right, now I get to tell you guys about mass replication. So it's a two drop field card. So you either pay two energy directly with this, or you use the two drop Goku Black. Either way. And the permanent is what makes this really amazing. Shadow tokens in your battle area can't attack and gain blocker. Which you really never use your shadow tokens to attack anyway. So that makes practically no difference. And they gain blocker. Now that's something those decks, especially the Goku Black deck. That's something it's needed for so long. And now it's getting it. And the auto is once per turn. When you play a Goku Black card in your battle area. If your leader is a Goku Black or Zamasu. Play one shadow token. And not to mention, if you play a Goku Black or a monster that a Goku Black that already spouts out shadow tokens on its own, you get to play another shadow token on top of that, and they're all gonna gain blocker. So you're gonna have all the defense you need, which to me is just incredible. Love it so much. All right, next one here is your wide open. It's a two-drop counterplay. If your leader card is blue. The battle card your opponent's playing has four or less energy. It is returned to its owner's hand instead of being played. So blue has its own version of preemptive strike, essentially. Really, really awesome. I believe every color is getting their own version of that now, which I absolutely love. Something that we definitely needed. All right, all too easy. This is going to be the new blue counter attack. So to get the attack and choose up to opponent's battle card to energy cost of one and return to the owner's hand. And the permanent is the same as all the other one drop counters here. If it's in your drop area, you can activate by paying the energy cost or removing this and one blue card in your in your hand from the game. 
and you can't activate more than one of these for duration of the turn. And right there's the green stuff. We already went over that. All right, let me just scroll through here for the yellow. Okay, there we go. Sweet, I got it perfectly. Yep, got it perfectly. Right where I needed to be. So now we're getting to some of the yellow stuff here. First leader for yellow is going to be Hit. I've been saying for so long, all we've needed for Hit is just for him to be a Universe 6 leader. Like, he doesn't even have to be good. He just needs a Universe 6 leader for himself. And then he'll be amazing. Which he is. In all honesty. So activate man is once per turn. Choose one card in your life. Add it to your hand. Choose up to one blue or yellow Universe 6 card with an energy cost of one in your hand and play it. So, already really awesome right there. His awakening is that when your life is at four or less, you draw one card, tap, reach stand energy, and flip him over. And his side here is time skip hit. Love that artwork. When his card attacks, you draw a card. When your opponent's leader card flips back to its front, choose up to one blue or yellow Universe 6 card from your drop area when a card energy costs a three or less, and play it. So, really, really nice there. Activate main once per turn. Choose one card in your hand. Place it in your drop area. Then choose up to one blue or yellow universe 6 card in one hand you cast a 2 or less and play it. So, it just spams out universe 6 is left and right. So, that's really, really good. Alright, the next leader here is going to be Khalifa and Kale. When he when this attacks a leader card, you get to draw a card. When you have that remains when you have three or more energy, choose up to one blue kale and one yellow Khalifa with energy cost of two or less, play them, then negate the skill for the duration of the game. So it's the exact it's the identical version of the blue Goku and Vegeta that we saw earlier. And he awakens the same, four or less, you just draw one card, and goes over to Kefla. And here when she and her one auto is when she attacks, draw a card, then choose up to one universe six in your battle area, and both this card and the chosen guard gain five thousand power for a duration of turn. So the Awakened side here is basically a better version of Saiyan Bon Vegeta from Tournament of Power. That's the way I'm seeing it. So, not a bad leader. And this is the vanilla 2-drop Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta that was mentioned earlier with that Trunks 1-drop. Just a vanilla, nothing more to say on it. Then we have Saiyan Bloodline Vegeta, another 2-drop yellow. When his card attacks, two, look at the top two cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to one blue or yellow sand among them, add it to your hand, then place the remaining cards in your drop area. So this is another two drop that you can play off the blue leader skill. So pretty cool. Champa the Trickster. It's a counterplay. Same permanent as the Gohan. Multicolor, reduce it by one. And when you play this card, choose up to win your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barriers, switch it to rest mode, then draw one card into your opponent's turn. Now this one I could definitely see play in a lot of yellow decks. Because just the fact that it ignores Barrier, that's really, really amazing. And you can essentially play it for two energy if you have the multicolors. So, I could definitely see this Jamba being played in yellow decks. Alright, a Super 4. Yellow's going to be Hit Pride of Universe 6. And this card is a doozy. So, 5 drop, EX Evolve, 2, ye two yellow, and 1 of any other energy on top of a Hit. Dual Attack. And his auto is a Bond 2 with Universe 6. When a card evolves into this card, if your leader is a yellow universe 6, and you have 4 or more energy, flip your opponent's leader to the front. If you do, your opponent can activate their leader's Awaken or Wish skills until the end of their next turn. So the leader skill with hit all of a sudden comes into really big play there. Not to mention just be able to literally unawaken your opponent or unwish them? Yo! That is brutal. The activate main on him is choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and negate skills for a duration of a turn and send it to its owner's warp. At the end of your opponent's next turn, play the card sent to the warp from the skill and its owner's battle area in rest mode. So another good way of spot removal on top of everything. All right, hit after image master is next. Auto is when you play this card from your hand, your opponent chooses one card from your hand, sends it to the warp. Ouch. Activate main is send this card to its owner's warp at the start of your next main phase. If your leader card is a yellow universe 6, play that card that was sent to the warp by the skill in its owner's battle area. So it's another way to just like recycle itself every turn. Kaba Undisguised Rage. It's a 2 drop with blocker and revenge. Nothing more to say. 
We haven't seen Revenge in quite some time, so it's nice to get a blocker with it too for just a two drop. But other than that, literally nothing more to say. That's literally what it is. All right, Kaba brimming with spirit. Auto is when you play this card, draw one card. It's a one drop for that, but it's a universe six, so you can't potentially play that for free. So really, really nice there. And Khalifa, the Awakened Sisters, our next super here. Double strike. And her auto is the exact same as the blue KO we saw. Just replace it with yellow Khalifa. And it's literally the exact same thing. And the other autos, when you play this card, you switch between opponents, battle cards, or energy, and switch it to rest mode. So there's a lot of cards in this set that can forcibly switch energy to rest mode, which is pretty scary. We have Khalifa, the Resistant Sister. And she's a 4 draw with a permanent with that if your opponent has 6 or more cards in rest mode, you can play this card from your hand without paying its energy cost. So, free 4 drop, not bad. Alright, let's go here. Got the Bold Sister here next. Same permanent as the Kale, it can't be KO'd by skills. And when you play this card, you look at your top 5 cards from the top of your deck, choose up to one blue or yellow universe 6 card among them, and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. So not a bad way to search for everything. It's actually going to be your main searcher. Ironclad Defense Frost. It's a 4 drop blocker. And during your turn, at the end of a battle, after you combo with this card, choose up to one yellow frost in your battle area and play this card on top of it. Then switch this card to active mode. So not too bad. Not too bad. And here is the frost you would most likely be playing it on top of. Frost path to full power. And its auto is pretty long. When you come up with this card and your leader is yellow, you may choose one card from your hand and place it in the drop area if you do choose one. Same thing as the Zama, as the um, Goasu, it's just a way to fight you in the middle a little bit. But if you decide to play him, you can also just go straight to the Ironclad as well. So, he's got a bit more purpose than most of them. Next up here we have Botamo. This is going to be the super combo that we get for yellow in this but we already have tailored universe 6 combo cards so i'm not really sure how it's gonna go then again i don't remember to determine the power one is just universe 6 or if it's red universe 6. i'll have to look at that in a bit but yes this is the new yellow one we're getting for the set and we're actually getting two yellow and i believe that yeah okay, okay never mind this is the exact same as the one from tournament of power when you come up with this card, if you lose in universe 6 and your life's at 5 or less, you draw a card and gain 10,000 for the duration of that turn. So it's the exact same as the one from Tournament of Power, so it literally doesn't matter which one you play. I like the art in this one too, where it's just like spinning up the lava. That's pretty cool. Alright, we do get the Namekian in universe 6 here as well. Namekian partner Samuel, if I'm pronouncing that right. His auto is when you play this card, choose up to one Namekian partner Prina from your deck and add it to your hand. And here is that Namekian partner Prina. When you play this card, you look for a Sanoel and add to your hand from the deck. So they basically search each other. It's their whole point. And now here comes the yellow Zamasu stuff that I have been waiting for. Inevitable, inviting Despair. It's a four drop with Indestructible. And his permanent is that battle card chosen with this card's skill cannot be switched to active mode. And the auto is when you play this card, choose up to two sand, earthling, and or god cards in your opponent's air battle area and switch them to rest mode. So you can just you can just pick a couple cards, put them in rest mode, and they can't get back up. Not to mention this card's an indestructible. So even though we're getting a few more ways around it, it's still not the easiest thing to deal with. So they had to like go through some hoops and hurdles to get rid of this while keeping those battle cards in rest mode. A little bit expensive with a 4 drop here, but I'd say it's definitely worth it because you would play this with blue, and blue has all the ways in the world to accelerate energy, especially if you're playing a Goku Black Zamasu. And next up here is Hidden Ambition Zamasu. He's a 2 drop, indestructible, barrier, and deflect. Oh my god. Oh, man, if there was ever an invincible card, it's essentially this one. Because, <laughs> like, indestructible barrier and deflect, like... Literally, I think the only things I could get around this... I think the only thing that would get around this would be the Zeno. Because, like, 
with Barrier, you can't even reduce his power to zero to get rid of him. Like, man, it was bad enough when we got the indestructible barrier blocker from set three. Now you're giving us one without the blocker, but the deflect? Oh, we're gonna abuse this. Like, they, they can't expect us not to abuse that. And his auto is, when you play this card, choose up to one blue Goku black with the energy cost of two or less in your hand and play it. So, not a bad way of just getting more of the monsters and Goku blacks out. So, pretty cool, pretty cool indeed. And next up here is one of the card, the very card that Goku Black specifically has needed for so long. And Zamasu the Mastermind. He's a blocker, and his permanent is if there is a Goku Black card in your battle area or leader area, you can play this card from your hand without paying its energy cost. Set 2 Goku Black has needed this card since its release. Like... That has always been the one kind of card that, that deck needed so badly, and now it has it. Like, I was practically doing flips when I first saw this card. Sorry for that cut there, guys. My microphone actually died in the middle of this, so I had to replace the battery on it quickly. But, yeah. Oh my god, we've needed this card for so long! Not to mention, like, even the Fusa Master from Set 2 could have really used this card. But, like, yeah. If you're a Goku Black or a Master player, such as myself, this set answers almost all of your prayers for the previous leaders, not to mention severely making the new leader have more and more viability throughout the... throughout everything. So, yeah. I'm calm now. In case you guys couldn't tell, I'm actually pretty hyped about this card. <laughs> Alright, that does it for that. And, well, not quite yet. We're at weak spot protection now. So, one drop yellow. Activate battle. If your leader cards in universe 6, it gains 10,000 power for a duration in battle. Then draw one card. So, it's essentially a second super combo that you could play. So, not bad. I definitely like it. And we have zero mortals plan. And the permanent is this is a desire card, so hey, yellow Shenron decks out there. Be looking at this. And the activate is choose one Zamasu in your battle area without indestructible. Place it in the owner's drop area. Then choose up to one Zamasu in your hand with indestructible with an energy cost of four or less and play it. So it'd be a little bit weird how you would make this work. But Essentially, it just helps you spam out indestructible Zamasu's easier. I really wish we would get like a Zamasu Shenron leader because he used Super Shenron in the show. So I'm really hoping we could get that some some time down the line. But I have no room to say like really complain about everything because like we've gotten basically everything we need for that deck. So I definitely like the card; it has potential. You have to mess around with some of the other yellow Shenron leaders for a bit. But I can definitely see something with this working. Alright, next up is Kefla's Fury. It's a two-drop counterplay. If your leader card is yellow, draw two cards. Pretty cool card. Eh, it's two energy, so I'm not too sure about it, because it only does the two cards. But it's not bad. It's honestly not bad. It's just there's other counterplays I would much rather be playing than just the Kefla's Fury. But drawing two cards is never a bad thing. And the one drop counter here for this, for yellow, is going to be Restrain. And the uh, the, it's, uh, the counter attack effect is, you look at cards yellow and they get the attack, then choose up to one opponent's battle cards with energy cost of one, that's all the same. And you switch it to rest mode. Permanent's the same, and the auto is the exact same. Like, they're all going to be the same in this. And now we are getting to the black cards here as well. What The one thing I wasn't too keen on with the black cards is that there's no new leader. But the black cards in there are honestly pretty amazing. So, and I apologize that I keep looking down. I know it's a little weird, but I'm just trying to make sure that the battery is still alive. So, Sun Goku Dimensional Defender is first. He's a 3-drop, overall 3, and you pay an energy. And the others with his card attacks, you may choose one card in your life, add it to your hand. If you do, choose up to two black battle cards in your warp and place them in your drop area. So he's essentially an overrun one tap one. So not to mention the help self-awaken as well. 
It's pretty damn good. Next up here is Goku making an entrance. It's like counterattack, negate the attack and play this card. And what's interesting about him is that he is a zero combo cost here. I found that very interesting as a few of the black cards here actually have this. They actually don't have a combo power at all. So I found that pretty interesting. Not really sure why they chose to do it like that, but hey. But regardless, this is a pretty good card. I have no complaints about it. And next up here we have Vegeta making an entrance. It's a counter to a counter. When So when your opponent plays a counter, you get to play this. Choose three battle cards with energy cost of three or more and 35,000 power or less in your drop area and place them in your deck in any order. Then play this card. And this card can only be played from any area using counter. And only one Vegeta can be played in your battle area. So this is like a much better version of the other Janemba fights. Because Black needs it the most, honestly. So I could definitely... It's definitely justify why Black would get the best recycle version. Because it truly does need it the most. So I definitely like this card right here. Not to mention the fact that it's only a one-drop counter counter too, so really, really good. Especially against Janemba Mill again, because they play so many counters in your deck. So you will definitely have more than enough opportunities to play this guy. And we are getting a black vanilla for the first time. It's going to be Super Saiyan Trunks, two-drop, two, 20,000 power. And again, his combo cost is zero. I mean, his combo power is zero. Which, like I said, a few of these have it, which not really sure why again. But still, not bad. I'm really glad that Black finally has one of these. And now we have Trunks Time Regulator. He's an Overrun 3. Otherwise, when you play this card using Overrun, draw two cards and choose one card at hand and send it to your warp. So it's essentially the Bardock card, but it's an Overrun 1 less. So pretty cool. You could potentially play this one a little bit earlier. But over a free draw two and pitching one, that's always good. Like, there's never a bad one of those. Never, never. All right. Supreme Kai of Time, Time Regulator. It's a one-drop blocker, and when you play it, you draw a card. So, not too bad, not too bad. But again, combo, combo power of zero. Yep. Next up, we have Demi Gorilla Sorcerer. And, he, and to me, he looks so weird in this. I don't know why. It's like, just very weird looking. So he's a one-drop. And as auto is, when you play this card, you may choose one card in your life, add it to your hand. If you do, your opponent chooses cards in their hand and place them in their drop area until they have 12 cards in hand. Not really sure about that second half of the skill, but the fact that it's just another one drop that you get to help take a life with, that alone makes it enough. Like, even if it just stopped right there, this card would have been fine. But I guess that other effect is okay, if they somehow have like a whole bunch of cards in their hand. But I have never played anyone who had 12 or more cards in hand. The most I've ever seen is like 10 or 11. I've never seen 12. Alright. Toa Dimension Leaper is next. It's going to be a 2-drop blocker revenge. And is a counterplay as well. You choose 2 cards from your drop area and send them to your warp to play this card. So that's definitely pretty dang cool right there. Get to just... Send cards to your warp, yeah, but it's also a something you play on your opponent's turn that has revenge and blocker. So I can definitely see as being played in some of the Black Overrun decks out there. Definitely. Alright. Assembling the squad. I'm like 50% sure this is why they decided to ban a child's wish just so they could push out this card here. Permanent is that games is there in all areas. At the very minute, your real leader card is a Shenron, doesn't matter the color. Choose one battle card from your deck with an energy cost of 2 or less and a power of 15 or less and play it. So, it's almost like a watered down version of Child's Wish because it's three. It's a 2 drop or less instead of a 3, but you get to play it from deck. So, in a way, it's a little bit better? I don't know. But still, regardless though, I could see it as being abused just as much as a child's wish was, so it's definitely gonna be a lot of abusive combos with this card that are definitely gonna be out there once we get this set. It's so, like I would not be surprised if this card becomes a problem eventually. Would not at all be surprised. 
All right, next up here is tra Time Transmission G. So, four drop, activate maze, choose up to one black battle card on energy cost of four or less, and your warp and play it. If the battle card played with this skill has Overrealm or Dark Overrealm, choose up to two of your energy and switch them to active mode. So, it's almost the worst version of Dark Plot, but it includes Dark Overrealm as well. So, kind of makes up for it. And Toki Toki City. Now, this is one of the leaked ones from previous videos that I did go over. But it is a one drop field. When you play this card using. When you play a battle card using Overrealm, place the top card underneath this deck. And. On the top, place the top card of your deck underneath this card. And the activate maze, you choose three cards from this. You choose three cards under this. Send them to your warp. If your leader is black, battle cards you play using Overrealm aren't sent to the warps at the end of this turn. So this keeps Overrealm out permanently. Which is just, just stupidly busted. Because there's some overwhelmed cards out there that need to be overwhelmed cards because they'll need to be staying on the field for more than one turn. But the fact that we have some of them that do now. Oy. This is another card that I could potentially see being like just a nasty problem in the future. But it is a nasty problem that I will be kind of abusing. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's it's a, still it's still a very powerful card. An unexpected turn is going to be the next card here. Counterplay. It's a one drop. When you, if your opponent has three or more battle cards in play with energy cost of two or more, the battle card your opponent is playing is placed in the owner's drop area instead. Then choose all battle cards with energy cost of two or less, ignoring barrier, and send them to your opponent's warps. It's a little bit situational. But when you get off those conditions, it's an ex it's like such a busted card. Like, depending on what your opponent is like dishing out, you could completely just ruin their entire board with this. But again, it is a little bit situational. So this is something I could see in the side deck. I don't see too many people main decking this in big events, but side deck, I could definitely see like two of this in the side deck. Okay, and here's some of the multicolored cards. We've already seen the green, red stuff. But we did get blue, yellow ones released. And those are the ones I want to show you. So, Meteorotic Energy Vegito. This is the one that works with the trucks. Super rare. So, 8 drop, Union Patara, 2 blue, 2 yellow. Top of a blue, Goku, and a yellow Vegeta. It's got barrier and energy exhaust. The other is when this card attacks, if your opponent has three or more energy, choose up to three blue or yellow bell cards in your energy area and combo with them. So, eh. When you combo with a bell card using this card's skill and your leader card is blue, if you have three or more bell cards in your combo area, choose all of your opponent's bell cards and, and energy. Switch them to rest mode and those cards can't be switched to active mode during your opponent's next charge phase. So, it's a hefty cost. Definitely, but it could severely hold back your opponent by not allowing them to restand their energy during the next charge phase. Ay! So this is definitely one of those high risk, high reward kind of cards. I kind of wish this card had like a double strike or something like that, but honestly, barrier and be able to combo with all that, I, I suppose that's enough. And next up here is Champa Vado's Gracious Aid. He's got a rival blue yellow for a single yellow. Not bad. Energy exhaust, of course. Permanent is reduce the combo cost of of all blue and yellow universe six cards in your hand by one. So that essentially with this out, this essentially makes the Kale and Khalifa super rares free combo cards to go with it. So that's pretty amazing right there. The other permanent is that if this card is removed from a battle area by an opponent's skill. You may choose one card from your hand to place in the, your drop area instead. If you do, this card remains in the battle area. Switch it to rest mode, then choose up to one of your energy and switch it to rest mode. So it's even got a nice way of protecting itself as well. So definitely a good card. Definitely going to be needed in the new Universe 6 strategy. Beerus the Fickle God. Oh boy. <laughs> no, it's not a bad card. It's just, I'm just looking at the artwork. Just him just lazing about during the whole Goku Black Zamasu business. So, I'm not even going to bother with the energy exhaust because now we know all multicolored cards have this. 
And the permanent is that if there is a card that is both blue and yellow in your energy, other than this card, you get to negate the energy exhaust. So that's pretty neat. The other is when you play this card, draw one card. Not too bad, but you mainly, this is going to be mainly energy fodder. Like that's going to be the main purpose of this because of that permanent right there. But if you need to dig through your deck more, it's definitely, it's, that's a way to dig through your deck. Alright, Meteor, Meteorotic Energy Kefla is next. So it's a, she's a 7 drop. You need Patara for a single yellow on top of a blue Kale and yellow Khalifa when energy costs a 4 or more. And especially with that Chompa Vados we just saw, that is extremely easy. Barrier, Aegis Blue Yellow. Basically what Aegis is, is that if it's your opponent's turn, you can activate this during defense step by placing cards in your hand to the drop barrier that match those colors. And you get to choose two of your energy, switch them to active mode. I kind of went, I kind of did a refresher on that because I never really talked about Aegis too much. And the other was when this card activates Aegis, choose up to three of your opponent's energy and switch them to rest mode. This is a pretty brutal card, not gonna lie. Really, really brutal. Not to mention Universe, along with Goku Black Zamasu and Raditz, Universe 6 is looking extremely tempting too. Alright, next up here is Kefla Peak of Perfection. She's an arrival blue yellow for a single yellow. Has two autos. First one is when you come up with this card, if your leader is a Universe 6 card and it's your opponent's turn, you may choose one of your opponent's energy, switch it to rest mode. If you do, your Kefla Peak of Evolution's auto skills don't activate for the duration of the turn. Any other items when you play this card during your turn, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, switch it to rest mode, then negate that battle card skills until the end of your opponent's next turn. So, pretty, pretty interesting with this one here. And it's Fuse Zamasu Divine Providence. I love the artwork on this one. So he's an 8-drop, indestructible, has a Unipatara option for 4 blue, Two yellow with a good blue Goku Black and a yellow Zamasu. For blue, that's not too big of a deal. I mean, yeah, six energy is a lot, but with everything blue has, not to mention the Goku Black Zamasu stuff specifically, it's not the worst thing in the world. And the other is when you play this card with Union, your opponent reveals their hand. You get and you choose two cards from it and add it to them in their energy in rest mode. So it's another way to just really accelerate your opponent's energy to go for that leader killing skill. And next up here is Fuse of Master the Cunning. He's a counterattack, negate the attack and play this card. Indestructible, Aegis Blue Yellow. And the permanent is that if, you're, if your leader card is a Zamasu card and it's your opponent's turn, you reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by two. So it's a two drop counterplay not to mention with the Aegis, too, to use during your opponent's turn to restand. So this is a really good card here. Like, especially for, Z for Zamasu decks out there, it's a very good card. Like, regardless if you want to use the set 2 Fuse Zamasu or set 7 Zamasu, you play this card regardless. It's just that good. Very good card. And we do have our Infinite Saiyan Rares, or basically our Campaign Rares. Finally, we now know what they do. <laughs> Super Saiyan 3 Nappa. It's a 4 drop with critical. Permanent is if you have any non red cards in any areas other than your deck, hand, or life, you can't play this card from any area. And all the campaigns have that for their color. So, just so I don't repeat the permanent over and over. And the auto with him is that when you play this card from your hand, choose up to one of your opponent's cards in, opponent's cards in your life and place it in a drop area. <gasps> it's honestly kind of fair. He is a 4 drop after all. Not to mention all red, so not the easiest thing to bring out. So, he's not bad. Next up here we have Super Saiyan 3 Trunks Saiyan Harmonizer. It's a 4 drop with double strike. Otherwise, uh, when you play this card, you can't play this card for the duration of the turn. When this card attacks, choose all battle cards without keyword skills in your drop area and combo with them in your combo area. And his activate main is once per turn for 4 energy, you draw 2 cards and switch this card to active mode. So, not a bad card. Definitely helps out blue leaders quite a bit. I can especially see this being played in Starter Coop, as, long, as well as a few other blue leaders as well. So I definitely like it. The second auto is also very interesting. Super Saiyan Broly... Super Saiyan 3 Broly Saiyan Berserker. Yeah, that's a mouthful. 
He is an activate main of four. Choose one Broly's ring in your battle area and place it in its owner's drop area. And you play this card from your hand. So an eight drop that becomes a four drop. Not bad. And the items, when you play this card, choose up to one green Broly in your hand with an energy cost of seven or less and play it. So four energy you're getting out of this and a seven drop in your hand. So that's pretty dang good right there. And the others, when this card is placed in your drop area from your hand by a skill and your leader is a Broly card, choose up to one Broly Zuri from your deck, activate it, then shuffle your deck. If you do, choose one or two cards in your life and add it to your hand. So this this one right here, at least in my opinion, it essentially makes Paragus useless. Like, the two drop Paragus from set one. The one that can activate it. This, to me, makes it useless. So I really, really do like this card. For all the all the old school Broly stuff out there, this is a very good card for you. And next up here we have Super Saiyan 2 Kefla Saiyan Synthesis. It's a four drop yellow. Activate main is two. Choose one card from your hand, place it in the drop area. Play this card from your hand. And the autos when you play this card, you choose one. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and switch it to rest mode. You, or you can choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards to rest mode and KO it. Now, to me, this is like the easiest one to play. This is the quickest one to get out, out of all of them. And arguably, to me, this one can do the most damage the most quickly. And finally, we have Go Sun Goku Saiyan Transcendence. It's a double strike. Xeno Evolve 1 on top of a Sun Goku Xeno with energy cost of 3 or less. So, before you get too excited, he has some permanents here. First one is, the second one here is that if you have three or less energy, you can't play this card from any area. So you can't just go to that one drop Goku, then next turn just go right on top of this. Fortunately, you can't do that. But then again, I might be a little bit busted if you could. So I do understand that restriction. And the activate mains, you choose up to four black bell cards in your warp and place them in your drop area. So it definitely helps with the overrun stuff a lot. So that does it for all the set cards released at the moment. So yeah, definitely having a lot of stuff here that has been released, and I am just super hyped for all of it, guys. All of it. So if you guys enjoyed this video here, and man, I really thank all of you guys for second around, because this was a very long video. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, like and comment down below. And with that, guys, set 7 is closer than you think. Less than a month away now, I believe. And, yeah, it's just going so, so crazy. So, definitely going to be back here once they reveal the secret rares. Because those are going to be a doozy. And with that, guys, hope you all enjoyed this video here today. Hope you all have a fantastic day. See you guys next time. And you've all been released.